Section 23 of the Aeneid of Virgil. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aeneid of Virgil. Translated by John Dryden. Book 12, Part 1. When Turnus saw the Latins leave the field, their armies broken and their courage quelled, himself become the mark of public spite, his honor questioned for the promised fight. The more he was with vulgar hate oppressed, the more his fury boiled within his breast. He roused his vigor for the last debate, and raised his haughty soul to meet his fate. As when the swains the Libyan lion chase, he makes a sour retreat nor mends his pace, but if the pointed javelin pierce his side, the lordly beast returns with double pride. He wrenches out the steel, he roars for pain, his sides he lashes and erects his mane. So Turnus fares, his eyeballs flash with fire, through his wide nostrils clouds of smoke expire. Trembling with rage around the court he ran, at length approached the king and thus began. No more excuses or delays. I stand in arms prepared to combat hand to hand, this base deserter of his native land. The Trojan, by his word, is bound to take the same conditions which himself did make. Renew the truce, the solemn rites prepare, and to my single virtue trust the war. The Latians unconcerned shall see the fight. This arm unaided shall assert your right. Then, if my prostrate body press the plain, to him the crown and beauteous bride remain. To whom the king sedately thus replied, Brave youth, the more your valor has been tried, the more becomes it us, with due respect, to weigh the chance of war which you neglect. You want not wealth, or a successive throne, or cities which your arms have made your own. My towns and treasures are at your command, and stored with blooming beauties is my land. Laurentum more than one Lavinia sees, unmarried, fair, of noble families. Now let me speak, and you with patience hear, things which perhaps may grate a lover's ear, but sound advice, proceeding from a heart sincerely yours, and free from fraudful art. The gods by signs have manifestly shown No prince Italian born should heir my throne. Oft have our augurs in prediction skilled, And oft our priests foreign son revealed. Yet one by worth that cannot be withstood, Bribed by my kindness to my kindred blood, Urged by my wife who would not be denied, I promised my Lavinia for your bride. Her from her plighted lord by force I took, All ties of treaties and of honor broke. On your account I waged an impious war, With what success tis needless to declare. I and my subjects feel, and you have had your share, Twice vanquished while in bloody fields we strive, Scarce in our walls we keep our hopes alive. The rolling flood runs warm with human gore, the bones of Latians blanch the neighboring shore. Why put I not an end to this debate, Still unresolved and still a slave to fate? If Turnus' death a lasting peace can give, Why should I not procure it whilst you live? Should I to doubtful arms your youth betray, What would my kinsmen the Rutulians say? And should you fall in fight which heaven defend, How curse the cause which hastened to his end, the daughter's lover and the father's friend. Weigh in your mind the various chance of war. Pity your parent's age, and ease his care. Such balmy words he poured, but all in vain, the proffered medicine but provoked the pain. The wrathful youth disdaining the relief, with intermitting sobs thus vents his grief. The care, O oh best of fathers, which you take for my concerns, at my desire forsake. Permit me not to languish out my days, but make the best exchange of life for praise. This arm, this lance, can well dispute the prize, and the blood follows where the weapon flies. 
His goddess mother is not near to shroud the flying coward with an empty cloud. But now the queen, who feared for Turnus' life, and loathed the hard conditions of the strife, held him by force, and dying in his death, in these sad accents gave her sorrow breath. O Turnus, I adjure thee by these tears, and whate'er price Amata's honour bears within thy breast, since thou art all my hope, my sickly mind's repose, my sinking age's prop, since on the safety of thy life alone depends Latinus and the Latian throne, refuse me not this one, this only prayer, to waive the combat and pursue the war. Whatever chance attends this fatal strife, think it includes in thine Amata's life. I cannot live a slave or see my throne usurped by strangers or a Trojan son. At this a flood of tears Lavinia shed, a crimson blush her beauteous face o'erspread, varying her cheeks by turns with white and red. The driving colours, never at a stay, run here and there and flush and fade away. Delightful change! Thus Indian ivory shows, which with the bordering paint of purple glows, or lilies damasked by the neighbouring rose. The lover gazed, and, burning with desire, the more he looked, the more he fed the fire. Revenge and jealous rage and secret spite roll in his breast and rouse him to the fight. Then fixing on the queen his ardent eyes, firm to his first intent, he thus replies, O mother, do not by your tears prepare such boding omens and prejudge the war. Resolved on fight, I am no longer free to shun my death, if heaven my death decree. Then, turning to the herald, thus pursues, Go greet the Trojan with ungrateful news. Denounce from me that when tomorrow's light shall gild the heavens, he need not urge the fight. The Trojan and Rutulian troops no more shall die with mutual blood the Latian shore. Our single swords the quarrel shall decide, and to the victor be the beauteous bride. He said, and striding on with speedy pace he sought his coursers of the Thracian race. At his approach they toss their heads on high, and proudly neighing promise victory. The sires of these Arethia sent from far, to grace Pilumnus when he went to war. The drifts of Thracian snows were scarce so white, nor northern winds in fleetness matched their flight. Officious grooms stand ready by his side, and some with combs their flowing manes divide, and others stroke their chests and gently soothe their pride. He sheathed his limbs in arms, a tempered mass of golden metal those and mountain brass. Then to his head his glittering helm he tied, and girt his faithful fauchion to his side. In his Etnaean forge the god of fire that fauchion labored for the hero's sire. Immortal keenness on the blade bestowed, and plunged it hissing in the Stygian flood. Propped on a pillar which the ceiling bore, was placed the lance a runken actor wore, which with such force he brandished in his hand, the tough ash trembled like an osier wand, then cried, O ponderous spoil of actor slain, and never yet by Turnus tossed in vain, fail not this day thy wonted force, but go, sent by this hand, to pierce the Trojan foe. Give me to tear his corslet from his breast, and from that eunuch head to rend the crest, dragged in the dust his frizzled hair to soil, hot from the vexing iron, and smeared with fragrant oil. Thus while he raves from his wide nostrils flies a fiery steam and sparkles from his eyes. So fares the bull in his loved female's sight, proudly he bellows and preludes the fight, he tries his goring horns against a tree, and meditates his absent enemy. He pushes at the winds, he digs the strand with his black hoofs, and spurns the yellow sand. Nor less the Trojan in his Lemnian arms to future fight his manly courage warms. He wets his fury, and with joy prepares to terminate at once the lingering wars. 
to cheer his chief's and tender son relates what heaven had promised and expounds the fates then to the latian king he sends to cease the rage of arms and ratify the peace the morn ensuing from the mountain's height had scarcely spread the skies with rosy light the ethereal coursers bounding from the sea from out their flaming nostrils breathed to the day when now the trojan and rutulian guard in friendly labor joined the list prepared beneath the walls they measure out the space then sacred altars rear on sods of grass where with religious their common gods they place in purest white the priests their heads attire and living waters bear and holy fire and o'er their linen hoods and shaded hair long twisted wreaths of sacred varian wear in order issuing from the town appears the latin legion armed with pointed spears and from the fields advancing on a line the trojan and the tuscan forces join their various arms afford a pleasing sight a peaceful train they seem in peace prepared for fight betwixt the ranks the proud commanders ride glittering with gold and vests in purple dyed here menestheus author of the memian line and there messapus born of seed divine the sign is given and round the listed space each man in order fills his proper place reclining on their ample shields they stand and fix their pointed lances in the sand now studious of the sight a numerous throng of either sex promiscuous old and young swarm the town by those who rest behind the gates and walls and houses tops are lined meantime the queen of heaven beheld the sight with eyes unpleased from mount albano's height since called albano by succeeding fame but then an empty hill without a name she thence surveyed the field the trojan powers the latian squadrons and laurentine towers then thus the goddess of the skies bespoke with sighs and tears the goddess of the lake king turnus sister once a lovely maid ere to the lust of lawless jove betrayed compressed by force but by the grateful god now made the nias of the neighboring flood o nymph the pride of living lakes said she o most renowned and most beloved by me long hast thou known nor need i to record the wanton sallies of my wandering lord of every latian fair whom jove misled to mount by stealth my violated bed to thee alone i grudged not his embrace but gave a part of heaven and an unenvied place now learn from me thy near approaching grief nor think my wishes want to thy relief while fortune favoured nor heaven's king denied to lend my succour to the latian side i saved thy brother and the sinking state but now he struggles with unequal fate and goes with gods averse o'ermatched in might to meet inevitable death in fight nor must i break the truce nor can sustain the sight thou if thou darest thy present aid supply it well becomes a sister's care to try at this the lovely nymph with grief oppressed thrice tore her hair and beat her comely breast to whom saturnia thus thy tears are late haste snatch him if he can be snatched from fate new tumults kindle violate the truce who knows what changeful fortune may produce tis not a crime to attempt what i decree or if it were discharge the crime on me she said and sailing on the winged wind left the sad nymph suspended in her mind and now pomp the peaceful kings appear four steeds the chariot of latinus bear twelve golden beams around his temples play to mark his lineage from the god of day two snowy coursers turnus chariot yoke and in his hand two massy spears he shook then issued from the camp in arms divine aeneas author of the roman line and by his side ascanius took his place the second hope of rome's immortal race adorned in white a reverend priest appears and offerings to the flaming altars bears 
a porket and a lamb that never suffered shears then to the rising sun he turns his eyes and strews the beasts designed for sacrifice with salt and meal with like officious care he marks their foreheads and he clips their hair betwixt their horns the purple wine he sheds with the same generous juice the flame he feeds aeneas then unsheathed his shining sword and thus with pious prayers the gods adored all-seeing sun and thou ausonian soil for which i have sustained so long a toil thou king of heaven and thou the queen of air propitious now and reconciled by prayer thou god of war whose unresisted sway the labors and events of arms obey ye living fountains and ye running floods all powers of ocean all ethereal gods hear and bear record if i fall in field or recreant in the fight to turnus yield my trojans shall increase evander's town ascanius shall renounce the ausonian crown all claims all questions of debate shall cease nor he nor they with force infringe the peace but if my juster arms prevail in fight as sure they shall if i divine aright my trojans shall not o'er the italians reign both equal both unconquered shall remain joined in their laws their lands and their abodes i ask but altars for my weary gods the care of those religious rites be mine the crown to king latinus i resign his be the sovereign sway nor will i share his power in peace or his command in war for me my friends another town shall frame and bless the rising towers with fair lavinia's name thus he then with erected eyes and hands the latian king before his altar stands by the same heaven said he and earth and main and all the powers that all the three contain by hell below and by that upper god whose thunder signs the peace who seals it with his nod so let latona's double offspring hear and double-fronted janus what i swear i touch the sacred altars touch the flames and all those powers attest and all their names whatever chance befall on either side no term of time this union shall divide no force no fortune shall my vows unbind or shake the steadfast tenor of my mind not though the circling seas should break their bound or flow the shores or sap the solid ground not though the lamps of heaven their spheres forsake hurled down and hissing in the nether lake even as this royal sceptre for he bore a sceptre in his hand shall never more shoot out in branches or renew the birth an orphan now cut from the mother earth by the keen axe dishonoured of its hair and cased in brass for latian kings to bear when thus in public view the peace was tied with solemn vows and sworn on either side all dues performed which holy rites require the victim beasts are slain before the fire the trembling entrails from their bodies torn and the fattened flames in chargers borne already the rotulians deem their man o'ermatched in arms before the fight began first rising fears are whispered through the crowd then gathering sound they murmur more aloud now side to side they measure with their eyes the champion's bulk their sinews and their size the nearer they approach the more is known the apparent disadvantage of their own turnus himself appears in public sight conscious of fate desponding of the fight slowly he moves and at his altar stands with eyes dejected and with trembling hands and while he mutters undistinguished prayers a livid deadness in his cheeks appears with anxious pleasure when juturna viewed the increasing fright of the mad multitude when their short sighs and thickening sobs she heard 
and found their ready minds for change prepared dissembling her immortal form she took camertus mean his habit and his look a chief of ancient blood in arms well known was his great sire and he his greater son his shape assumed amid the ranks she ran and humouring their first motions thus began for shame rutulians can you bear the sight of one exposed for all in single fight can we before the face of heaven confess our courage colder or our numbers less view all the trojan host the arcadian band and tuscan army count em as they stand undaunted to the battle if we go scarce every second man will share a foe turnus tis true in this unequal strife shall lose with honour his devoted life or change it rather for immortal fame succeeding to the gods from whence he came but you a servile and inglorious band for foreign lords shall sow your native land those fruitful fields your fighting fathers gained which have so long their lazy sons sustained with words like these she carried her design a rising murmur runs along the line then even the city troops and latians tired with tedious war seem with new souls inspired their champions fate with pity they lament and of the league so lately sworn repent nor fails the goddess to foment the rage with lying wonders and a false presage but adds a sign which present their eyes inspires new courage and a glad surprise for sudden in the fiery tracts above appears and pomp the imperial bird of jove a plump of fowl he spies that swim the lakes and o'er their heads his sounding pinions shakes then stooping on the fairest of the train in his strong talons trust a silver swan the italians wonder at the unusual sight but while he lags and labours in his flight behold the dastard fowl return anew and with united force the foe pursue clamorous around the royal hawk they fly and thickening in a cloud or shade the sky they cuff they scratch they cross his airy course nor can the encumbered bird sustain their force but vexed not vanquished drops the ponderous prey and lightened of his burthen wings his way the ausonian bands with shouts salute the sight eager of action and demand the fight then king tolomnius versed in augur's arts cries out and thus his boasted skill imparts at length tis granted what i long desired this this is what my frequent vows required ye gods i take your omen and obey advance my friends and charge i lead the way these are the foreign foes whose impious band like that rapacious bird infest our land but soon like him they shall be forced to see by strength united and forego the prey your timely succour to your country bring haste to the rescue and redeem your king he said and pressing onward through the crew poised in his lifted arm his lance he threw the winged weapon whistling in the wind came driving on nor missed the mark designed at once the cornel rattled in the skies at once tumultuous shouts and clamours rise nine brothers in a goodly band there stood born of arcadian mixed with tuscan blood gylippus sons the fatal javelin flew aimed at the midmost of the friendly crew a passage through the jointed arms it found just where the belt was to the body bound and struck the gentle youth extended on the ground then fired with pious rage the generous train run madly forward to revenge the slain and some with eager haste their javelins throw and some with sword in hand assault the foe the wished insult the latine troops embrace and meet their ardour in the middle space the trojans tuscans and arcadian line with equal courage obviate their design peace leaves the violated fields and hate both armies urges to their mutual fate with impious haste their altars are o'erturned the sacrifice half broiled and half unburned thick storms of steel from either army fly and clouds of clashing darts obscure the sky brands from the fire are missive weapons made with chargers bowls and all the priestly trade latinus frighted hastens from the fray and bears his unregarded gods away these on their horses vault those yoke the car the rest with swords on high run headlong to the war 
Messapus, eager to confound the peace, spurred his hot courser through the fighting priests. At King Alestes, by his purple known, a Tuscan prince, and by his regal crown, and with a shock encountering bore him down. Backward he fell, and, as his fate designed, the ruins of an altar were behind. There, pitching on his shoulders and his head, amid the scattering fires he lay supinely spread. The beamy spear descending from above his cuirass pierced, and through his body drove. Then, with a scornful smile, the victor cries, The gods have found a fitter sacrifice. Greedy of spoils, the Italian strip the dead of his rich armor, and uncrown his head. Priest Corineus armed his better hand from his own altar with a blazing brand, and as Evusus with a thundering pace advanced to battle, dashed it on his face. His bristly beard shines out with sudden fires, the crackling crop a noisome scent expires. Following the blow, he seized his curling crown with his left hand, his other cast him down. The prostrate body with his knees he pressed, and plunged his holy poniard in his breast. While Podalerius with his sword pursued the shepherd Alsus through the flying crowd, swiftly he turns and aims a deadly blow, full on the front of his unwary foe. The broad axe enters with a crashing sound, and cleaves the chin with one continued wound. Warm blood and mingled brains besmear his arms around, an iron sleep his stupid eyes oppressed, and sealed their heavy lids in endless rest. But good Aeneas rushed amid the bands. Bare was his head, and naked were his hands, in sign of truce. Then thus he cries aloud, What sudden rage, what new desire of blood inflames your altered minds? O Trojans, cease from impious arms, nor violate the peace. By human sanctions, and by laws divine, the terms are all agreed. The war is mine. Dismiss your fears, and let the fight ensue. This hand alone shall right the gods and you. Our injured altars and their broken vow, To this avenging sword the faithless Turnus owe. Thus while he spoke unmindful of defence, A winged arrow struck the pious prince. But whether from some human hand it came, Or hostile god is left unknown by fame. No human hand or hostile god was found To boast the triumph of so base a wound. When Turnus saw the Trojan quit the plain, His chiefs dismayed, his troops a fainting train, The unhoped event his heightened soul inspires, At once his arms and coursers he requires, Then with a leap his lofty chariot gains, And with a ready hand assumes the reins. He drives impetuous, and where he goes, He leaves behind a lane of slaughtered foes. These his lance reaches, over those he rolls his rapid car, and crushes out their souls. In vain the vanquished fly, the victor sends the dead men's weapons at their living friends. Thus on the banks of Hebrus' freezing flood, the god of battles in his angry mood, clashing his sword against his brazen shield, let loose the reins and scours along the field. Before the wind his fiery coursers fly, Groans the sad earth, resounds the rattling sky. Wrath, terror, treason, tumult, and despair, Dire faces and deformed surround the car, Friends of the god and followers of the war. With fury not unlike nor less disdain, Exulting Turnus flies along the plain. His smoking horses at their utmost speed he lashes on and urges o'er the dead. Their fetlocks run with blood, and when they bound, the gore and gathering dust are dashed around. Thamyris and Pholus, masters of the war, he killed at hand, but Sthenelus afar. From far the sons of Imbracus he slew, Glaucus and Lades of the Lycian crew, both taught to fight on foot, in battle joined, or mount the courser that outstrips the wind. Meantime Eumedes, vaunting in the field, new fired the Trojans, and their foes repelled. This son of Dolon bore his grandsire's name, but emulated more his father's fame. His guileful father sent a knightly spy, the Grecian camp and order to descry, hard enterprise. And well he might require Achilles' car and horses for his hire. 
but met upon the scout the aetolian prince in death bestowed a juster recompense fierce turnus viewed the trojan from afar and launched his javelin from his lofty car then lightly leaping down pursued the blow and pressing with his foot his prostrate foe wrenched from his feeble hold the shining sword and plunged it in the bosom of its lord possess said he the fruit of all thy pains and measure at thy length our latian plains thus are my foes rewarded by my hand thus may they build their town and thus enjoy the land then dares butes sybaris he slew whom o'er his neck his floundering courser threw as when loud boreas with his blustering train stoops from above incumbent on the main where'er he flies he drives the rack before and rolls the billows on the aegean shore so where resistless turnus takes his course the scattered squadrons bend before his force his crest of horse's hair is blown behind by adverse air and rustles in the wind this haughty phegeus saw with high disdain and as the chariot rolled along the plain light from the ground he leapt and seized the rein this hung in air he still retained his hold the coursers frighted and their course controlled the lance of turnus reached him as he hung and pierced his plated arms but passed along and only raised the skin he turned and held against his threatening foe his ample shield then called for aid but while he cried in vain the chariot bore him backward on the plain he lies reversed the victor king descends and strikes so justly where his helmet ends he lops the head the latian fields are drunk with streams that issue from the bleeding trunk while he triumphs and while the trojans yield the wounded prince is forced to leave the field strong menestheus and achates often tried and young ascanius weeping by his side conduct him to his tent scarce can he rear his limbs from earth supported on his spear resolved in mind regardless of the smart he tugs with both his hands and breaks the dart the steel remains no readier way he found to draw the weapon than to enlarge the wound eager of fight impatient of delay he begs and his unwilling friends obey iapis was at hand to prove his art whose blooming youth so fired apollo's heart that for his love he proffered to bestow his tuneful harp and his unerring bow the pious youth more studious how to save his aged sire now sinking to the grave preferred the power of plants and silent praise of healing arts before phoebean bays propped on his lance the pensive hero stood and heard and saw unmoved the mourning crowd the famed physician tucks his robes around with ready hands and hastens to the wound with gentle touches he performs his part this way and that soliciting the dart and exercises all his heavenly art all softening simples known of sovereign use he presses out and pours their noble juice these first infused to lenify the pain he tugs with pincers but he tugs in vain then to the patron of his art he prayed the patron of his art refused his aid meantime the war approaches to the tents the alarm grows hotter and the noise augments the driving dust proclaims the danger near and first their friends and then their foes appear their friends retreat their foes pursue the rear the camp is filled with terror and affright the hissing shafts within the trench alight an undistinguished noise ascends the sky the shouts of those who kill and groans of those who die but now the goddess mother moved with grief and pierced with pity hastens her relief a branch of healing dittany she brought which in the cretan fields with care she sought rough is the stern which woolly leaves surround the leaves with flowers the flowers with purple crowned well known to wounded goats a sure relief to draw the pointed steel and ease the grief this venus brings in clouds involved and brews the extracted liquor with ambrosian dews and odorous panacea 
unseen she stands tempering the mixture with her heavenly hands and pours it in a bowl already crowned with juice of medicinal herbs prepared to bathe the wound the leech unknowing of superior art which aids the cure with this foments the part and in a moment ceased the raging smart stanched is the blood and in the bottom stands the steel but scarcely touched with tender hands moves up and follows of its own accord and health and vigor are at once restored iapis first perceived the closing wound and first the footsteps of a god he found arms arms he cries the sword and shield prepare and send the willing chief renewed to war this is no mortal work no cure of mine nor art's effect but done by hands divine some god our general to the battle sends some god preserves his life for greater ends the hero arms in haste his hands enfold his thighs with quiches of refulgent gold inflamed to fight and rushing to the field that hand sustaining the celestial shield this grips the lance and with such vigor shakes that to the rest the beamy weapon quakes then with a close embrace he strained his son and kissing through his helmet thus begun my son from my example learn the war in camps to suffer and in fields to dare but happier chance than mine attend thy care this day my hand thy tender age shall shield and crown with honours of the conquered field thou in thy riper years shall send thee forth to toils of war be mindful of my worth assert thy birthright and in arms be known for hector's nephew and aeneas son he said and striding issued on the plain anteus and menestheus and a numerous train attend his steps the rest their weapons take and crowding to the field the camp forsake a cloud of blinding dust is raised around labors beneath their feet the trembling ground now turnus posted on a hill from far beheld the progress of the moving war with him the latins viewed the covered plains and the chill blood ran backward in their veins juturna saw the advancing troops appear and heard the hostile sound and fled for fear aeneas leads and draws a sweeping train closed in their ranks and pouring on the plain as when a whirlwind rushing to the shore from the mid-ocean drives the waves before the painful hind with heavy heart foresees the flatted fields and slaughter of the trees with like impetuous rage the prince appears before his doubled front nor less destruction bears and now both armies shock in open field osiris is by strong thimbraeus killed archetius ufens epulon are slain all famed in arms and of the latian train by gaius menestheus and Acates' hand the fatal augur falls by whose command the truce was broken and whose lance imbrued with trojan blood the unhappy fight renewed loud shouts and clamours rend the liquid sky and o'er the field the frighted latins fly the prince disdains the dastards to pursue nor moves to meet in arms the fighting few turn us alone amid the dusky plain he seeks and to the combat calls in vain juturna heard and seized with mortal fear forced from the beam her brother's charioteer assumes his shape his armour and his mien and like metiscus in his seat is seen as the black swallow near the palace plies o'er empty courts and under arches flies now hawks aloft now skims along the flood to furnish her loquacious nest with food so drives the rapid goddess o'er the plains the smoking horses run with loosened reins she steers a various course among the foes now here now there her conquering brother shows now with a straight now with a wheeling flight she turns and bends but shuns the single fight aeneas fired with fury breaks the crowd and seeks his foe and calls by name aloud he runs within a narrower ring and tries to stop the chariot but the chariot flies if he but gain a glimpse juturna fears and far away the daunian hero bears
what should he do nor arts nor arms avail and various cares in vain his mind assail the great messapus thundering through the field in his left hand two pointed javelins held encountering on the prince one dart he drew and with unerring aim and utmost vigour threw aeneas saw it come and stooping low beneath his buckler shunned the threatening blow the weapon hissed above his head and tore the waving plume which on his helm he wore forced by this hostile act and fired with spite that flying turnus still declined the fight the prince whose piety had long repelled his inborn ardor now invades the field invokes the powers of violated peace their rights and injured altars to redress then to his rage abandoning the rein with blood and slaughtered bodies fills the plain end of section twenty three section twenty four of the aeneid of virgil this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the aeneid of virgil translated by john dryden book twelve part two what god can tell what numbers can display the various labors of that fatal day what chiefs and champions fell on either side in combat slain or by what deaths they died whom turnus whom the trojan hero killed who shared the fame and fortune of the field jove couldst thou view and not avert thy sight two jarring nations joined in cruel fight whom leagues of lasting love so shortly shall unite aeneas first rutulian sucro found whose valor made the trojans quit their ground betwixt his ribs the javelin drove so just it reached his heart nor needs a second thrust now turnus at two blows two brethren slew first from his horse fierce amicus he threw then leaping on the ground on foot assailed diores and an equal fight prevailed their lifeless trunks he leaves upon the place their heads distilling gore his chariot grace three cold on earth the trojan hero threw whom without respite at one charge he slew cethegus tanais targus fell oppressed and sad onethis added to the rest of theban blood whom peridia bore turnus two brothers from the lycian shore and from apollo's fane to battle sent o'erthrew nor phoebus could their fate prevent peaceful menetes after these he killed who long had shunned the dangers of the field on lerna's lake a silent life he led and with his nets and angle earned his bread nor pompous cares nor palaces he knew but wisely from the infectious world withdrew poor was his house his father's painful hand discharged his rent and ploughed another's land as flames among the lofty woods are thrown on different sides and both by winds are blown the laurels crackle in the sputtering fire the frighted sylvans from their shades retire or as two neighboring torrents fall from high rapid they run the foamy waters fry they roll to sea with unresisted force and down the rocks precipitate their course not with less rage the rival heroes take their different ways nor less destruction make with spears afar with swords at hand they strike and zeal of slaughter fires their souls alike like them their dauntless men maintain the field and hearts are pierced unknowing how to yield they blow for blow return and wound for wound and heaps of bodies raise the level ground moranus boasting of his blood that springs from a long royal race of latian kings is by the trojan from his chariot thrown crushed with the weight of an unwieldy stone betwixt the wheels he fell the wheels that bore his living load his dying body tore his starting steeds to shun the glittering sword paw down his trampled limbs forgetful of their lord fierce hylas threatened high and face to face affronted turnus in the middle space 
the prince encountered him in full career and at his temples aimed the deadly spear so fatally the flying weapon sped that through his helm it pierced his head nor Cisseus, couldst thou scape from turnus hand in vain the strongest of the arcadian band nor to cupentus could his gods afford availing aid against the aeneian sword which to his naked heart pursued the course nor could his plated shield sustain the force aeolus fell whom not the grecian powers nor great subverter of the trojan towers were doomed to kill while heaven prolonged his date but who can pass the bounds prefixed by fate in high lyrnesus and in troy he held two palaces and was from each expelled of all the mighty man the last remains a little spot of foreign earth contains and now both hosts their broken troops unite in equal ranks and mix in mortal fight serestus and undaunted menestheus join the trojan tuscan and arcadian line sea-born messapus with atinas heads the latin squadrons and a battle leads they strike they push they throng the scanty space resolved on death impatient of disgrace and where one falls another fills his place the cyprian goddess now inspires her son to leave the unfinished fight and storm the town for while he rolls his eyes around the plain in quest of turnus whom he seeks in vain he views the unguarded city from afar in careless quiet and secure of war occasion offers and excites his mind to dare beyond the task he first designed resolved he calls his chiefs they leave the fight attended thus he takes a neighboring height the crowding troops about their general stand all under arms and wait his high command then thus the lofty prince hear and obey ye trojan bands without the least delay jove is with us and what i have decreed requires our utmost vigor and our speed your instant arms against the town prepare the source of mischief and the seat of war this day the latian towers that mate the sky shall level with the plain in ashes lie the people shall be slaves unless in time they kneel for pardon and repent their crime twice have our foes been vanquished on the plain then shall i wait till turnus will be slain your force against the perjured city bend there it began and there the war shall end the peace profaned our rightful arms requires cleanse the polluted place with purging fires he finished and one soul inspiring all formed in a wedge the foot approached the wall without the town an unprovided train of gaping gazing citizens are slain some firebrands others scaling ladders bear and those they toss aloft and these they rear the flames now launched the feathered arrows fly and clouds of missive arms obscure the sky advancing to the front the hero stands and stretching out to heaven his pious hands attests the gods asserts his innocence abrades with breach of faith the arsonian prince declares the royal honor doubly stained and twice the rites of holy peace profaned dissenting clamors in the town arise each will be heard and all at once advise one part for peace and one for war contends some would exclude their foes and some admit their friends the helpless king is hurried in the throng and whate'er tide prevails is borne along thus when the swain within a hollow rock invades the bees with suffocating smoke they run around or labor on their wings disused to flight and shoot their sleepy stings to shun the bitter fumes in vain they try black vapors issuing from the vent involve the sky but fate and envious fortune now prepare to plunge the latins in the last despair the queen who saw the foes invade the town and brands on tops of burning houses thrown cast round her eyes distracted with her fear no troops of turnus in the field appear once more she stares abroad but still in vain and then concludes the royal youth is slain mad with her anguish impotent to bear the mighty grief she loathes the vital air 
and calls herself the cause of all this ill, and owns the dire effects of her ungoverned will. She raves against the gods, she beats her breast, she tears with both her hands her purple vest. Then round a beam a running noose she tied, and fastened by the neck obscenely died. Soon as the fatal news by fame was blown, and to her dames and to her daughter known, the sad Lavinia rends her yellow hair and rosy cheeks, the rest her sorrow share. With shrieks the palace rings, and madness of despair. The spreading rumor fills the public place, confusion, fear, distraction, and disgrace, and silent shame are seen in every face. Latinus tears his garments as he goes, both for his public and his private woes. With filth his venerable beard besmears, and sordid dust deforms his silver hairs. And much he blames the softness of his mind, obnoxious to the charms of womankind, and soon seduced to change what he so well designed, to break the solemn league so long desired, nor finish what his fates and those of Troy required. Now Turnus rolls aloof o'er empty plains, and here and there some straggling foes he gleams. His flying coursers please him less and less, ashamed of easy fight and cheap success. Thus half-contented, anxious in his mind, the distant cries come driving in the wind, shouts from the walls, but shouts in murmurs drowned a jarring mixture and a boding sound alas said he what mean these dismal cries what doleful clamours from the town arise confused he stops and backward pulls the reins she who the driver's office now sustains replies neglect my lord these new alarms here fight and urge the fortune of your arms there want not others to defend the wall if by your rival's hand the italians fall so shall your fatal sword his friends oppress, In honour equal, equal in success. To this the prince, O sister, for I knew the peace infringed Proceeded first from you, I knew you when you mingled first in fight, And now in vain you would deceive my sight. Why, goddess, this unprofitable care? Who sent you down from heaven, involved in air, Your share of mortal sorrows to sustain, and see your brother bleeding on the plain. For to what power can Turnus have recourse, or how resist his fate's prevailing force? These eyes beheld Moranus bite the ground, mighty the man, and mighty was the wound. I heard my dearest friend with dying breath my name invoking to revenge his death. Brave Ufens fell with honour on the place to shun the shameful sight of my disgrace, on earth supine a manly corpse he lies, His vest and armour are the victor's prize. Then shall I see Laurentum in a flame, Which only wanted to complete my shame. How will the Latins hoot their champions' flight? How Dranques will insult and point them to the sight? Is death so hard to bear, ye gods below, Since those above so small compassion show? Receive a soul unsullied, yet with shame, Which not belies my great forefather's name. He said, and while he spoke with flying speed, Came Sages urging on his foamy steed. Fixed on his wounded face a shaft he bore, And seeking Turnus sent his voice before. Turnus, on you, on you alone depends our last relief, Compassionate your friends. Like lightning, fierce Aeneas rolling on, with arms and vests, with flames invades the town. The brands are tossed on high, the winds conspire to drive along the deluge of the fire. All eyes are fixed on you, your foes rejoice, even the king staggers and suspends his choice. Doubts to deliver or defend the town, whom to reject or whom to call his son. The queen on whom your utmost hopes were placed, herself suborning death has breathed her last. Tis true, Messapus, fearless of his fate, With fierce Atinus' aid, defends the gate. On every side surrounded by the foe, The more they kill, the greater numbers grow. An iron harvest mounts, and still remains to mow. You, far aloof from your forsaken bands, 
your rolling chariot drive o'er empty sands stupid he sat his eyes on earth declined and various cares revolving in his mind rage boiling from the bottom of his breast and sorrow mixed with shame his soul oppressed and conscious worth lay laboring in his thought and love by jealousy to madness wrought by slow degrees his reason drove away the mists of passion and resumed her sway then rising on his car he turned his look and saw the town involved in fire and smoke a wooden tower with flames already blazed which his own hands on beams and rafters raised and bridges laid above to join the space and wheels below to roll from place to place sister the fates have vanquished let us go the way which heaven and my hard fortune show the fight is fixed nor shall the branded name of a base coward blot your brother's fame death is my choice but suffer me to try my force and vent my rage before i die he said and leaping down without delay through crowds of scattered foes he freed his way striding he passed impetuous as the wind and left the grieving goddess far behind as when a fragment from a mountain torn by raging tempests or by torrents borne or sapped by time or loosened from the roots prone through the void the rocky ruin shoots rolling from crag to crag from steep to steep down sink at once the shepherds and their sheep involved alike they rush to nether ground stunned with the shock they fall and stunned from earth rebound so turnus hasting headlong to the town shouldering and shoving bore the squadrons down still pressing onward to the walls he drew where shafts and spears and darts promiscuous flew and sanguine streams the slippery ground embrew first stretching out his arm in sign of peace he cries aloud to make the combat cease rutulians hold and latin troops retire the fight is mine and me the gods require tis just that i should vindicate alone the broken truce or for the breach atone this day shall free from wars the ausonian state or finish my misfortunes in my fate both armies from their bloody work desist and bearing backward form a spacious list the trojan hero who received from fame the welcome sound and heard the champion's name soon leaves the taken works and mounted walls greedy of war where greater glory calls he springs to fight exulting in his force his jointed armor rattles in the course like eryx or like athos great he shows or father apennine when white with snows his head divine obscure in clouds he hides and shakes the sounding forest on his sides the nations over awed surcease the fight immovable their bodies fixed their sight even death stands still nor from above they throw their darts nor drive their battering rams below in silent order either army stands and drop their swords unknowing from their hands the ausonian king beholds with wondering sight two mighty champions matched in single fight born under climes remote and brought by fate with swords to try their titles to the state now in closed field each other from afar they view and rushing on begin the war they launch their spears then hand to hand they meet the trembling soil resounds beneath their feet their bucklers clash thick blows descend from high and flakes of fire from their hard helmets fly courage conspires with chance and both engage with equal fortune yet and mutual rage as when two bulls for their fair female fight in silas shades or on taberna's height with horns adverse they meet the keeper flies mute stands the herd the heifers roll their eyes and wait the event which victor they shall bear and who shall be the lord to rule the lusty year with rage of love the jealous rivals burn and push for push and wound for wound return their dewlaps gored their sides are laved in blood loud cries and roaring sounds rebellow through the wood 
such was the combat in the listed ground so clash their swords and so their shields resound jove sets the beam in either scale he lays the champion's fate and each exactly weighs on this side life and lucky chance ascends loaded with death that other scale descends raised on the stretch young turnus aims a blow full on the helm of his unguarded foe shrill shouts and clamours ring on either side as hopes and fears their panting hearts divide but all in pieces flies the traitor sword and in the middle stroke deserts his lord now is but death or flight disarmed he flies when in his hand an unknown hilt he spies fame says that turnus when his steeds he joined hurrying to war disordered in his mind snatched the first weapon which his haste could find twas not the fated sword his father bore but that his charioteer matiscus wore this while the trojans fled the toughness held but vain against the great vulcanian shield the mortal tempered steel deceived his hand the shivered fragments shone amid the sand surprised with fear he fled along the field and now forthright and now in orbits wheeled for here the trojan troops the list surround and there the pass is closed with pools and marshy ground aeneas hastens though with heavier pace his wound so newly knit retards the chase and oft his trembling knees their aid refuse yet pressing foot by foot his foe pursues thus when a fearful stag is closed around with crimson toils or in a river found high on the bank the deep-mouthed hound appears still opening following still where'er he steers the persecuted creature to and fro turns here and there to scape his umbrian foe steep is the ascent and if he gains the land the purple death is pitched along the strand his eager foe determined to the chase stretched at his length gains ground at every pace now to his beamy head he makes his way and now he holds or thinks he holds his prey just at the pinch the stag springs out with fear he bites the wind and fills his sounding jaws with air the rocks the lakes the meadows ring with cries the mortal tumult mounts and thunders in the skies thus flies the daunian prince and flying blames his tardy troops and calling by their names demands his trusty sword the trojan threats the realm with ruin and their ancient seats to lay in ashes if they dare supply with arms or aid his vanquished enemy thus menacing he still pursues the course with vigour though diminished of his force ten times already round the listed place one chief had fled and the other given the chase no trivial prize is played for on the life or death of turnus now depends the strife within the space an olive tree had stood a sacred shade a venerable wood for vows to faunus paid the latin's guardian god here hung the vests and tablets were engraved of sinking mariners from shipwreck saved with heedless hands the trojans felled the tree to make the ground enclosed for combat free deep in the root whether by fate or chance or erring haste the trojan drove his lance then stooped and tugged with force immense to free the encumbered spear from the tenacious tree that whom his fainting limbs pursued in vain his flying weapon might from far attain confused with fear bereft of human aid then turnus to the gods and first to faunus prayed o faunus pity and thou mother earth where i thy foster son received my birth hold fast the steel if my religious hand your plant has honoured which your foes profaned propitious hear my pious prayer he said nor with successless vows invoked their aid the incumbent hero wrenched and pulled and strained but still the stubborn earth the steel detained juturna took her time and while in vain he strove assumed meticus form again and in that imitated shape restored to the despairing prince his daunian sword 
the queen of love who with disdain and grief saw the bold nymph afford this prompt relief to assert her offspring with a greater deed from the tough root the lingering weapon freed once more erect the rival chiefs advance one trusts the sword and one the pointed lance and both resolved alike to try their fatal chance meantime imperial jove to juno spoke who from a shining cloud beheld the shock what new arrest o queen of heaven is sent to stop the fates now laboring in the event what farther hopes are left thee to pursue divine aeneas and thou knowest it too for doomed to these celestial seats are due what more attempts for turnus can be made that thus thou lingerest in this lonely shade is it becoming of the due respect and awful honour of a god elect a wound unworthy of our state to feel patient of human hands and earthly steel or seems it just the sister should restore a second sword when one was lost before and arm a conquered wretch against his conqueror for what without thy knowledge and avow nay more thy dictate durst juturna do at last in deference to my love forbear to lodge within thy soul this anxious care reclined upon my breast thy grief unload who should relieve the goddess but the god now all things to their utmost issue tend pushed by the fates to their appointed end while leave was given thee and a lawful hour for vengeance wrath and unresisted power tossed on the seas thou couldst thy foes distress and driven ashore with hostile arms oppress deform the royal house and from the side of the just bridegroom tear the plighted bride now cease at my command the thunderer said and with dejected eyes this answer juno made because your dread decree too well i knew from turnus and from earth unwilling i withdrew else should you not behold me here alone involved in empty clouds my friends bemoan but girt with vengeful flames in open sight engaged against my foes in mortal fight tis true juturna mingled in the strife by my command to save her brother's life at least to try but by the stygian lake the most religious oath the gods can take with this restriction not to bend the bow or toss the spear or trembling dart to throw and now resigned to your superior might and tired with fruitless toils i loathe the fight this let me beg and this no fates withstand both for myself and for your father's land that when the nuptial bed shall bind the peace which i since you ordain consent to bless the laws of either nation be the same but let the latins still retain their name speak the same language which they spoke before wear the same habits which their grandsires wore call them not trojans perish the renown and name of troy with that detested town latium be latium still let alba reign and rome's immortal majesty remain then thus the founder of mankind replies unruffled was his front serene his eyes can saturn's issue and heaven's other air such endless anger in her bosom bear be mistress and your full desires obtain but quench the choler you foment in vain from ancient blood the ausonian people sprung shall keep their name their habit and their tongue the trojans to their customs shall be tied i will myself their common rights provide the natives shall command the foreigners subside all shall be latium troy without a name and her lost sons forget from whence they came from blood so mixed a pious race shall flow equal to gods excelling all below no nation more respect to you shall pay or greater offerings on your altars lay juno consents well pleased that her desires had found success and from the cloud retires the peace thus made the thunderer next prepares to force the watery goddess from the wars deep in the dismal regions void of light three daughters at a birth were born to night these their brown mother brooding on her care endued with windy wings to flit in air 
with serpents girt alike and crowned with hissing hair in heaven the dear eye called and still at hand before the throne of angry jove they stand his ministers of wrath and ready still the minds of mortal men with fears to fill whene'er the moody sire to wreak his hate on realms or towns deserving of their fate hurls down diseases death and deadly care and terrifies the guilty world with war one sister plague if these from heaven he sent to fright juturna with a dire portent the pest comes whirling down by far more slow springs the swift arrow from the parthian bow archidon you when traversing the skies and drenched in poisonous juice the sure destruction flies with such a sudden and unseen a flight shot through the clouds the daughter of the night soon as the field enclosed she had in view and from afar her destined quarry knew contracted to the boding bird she turns which haunts the ruined piles and hallowed urns and beats about the tombs with nightly wings where songs obscene on sepulchres she sings thus lessened in her form with frightful cries the fury round unhappy turnus flies flaps on his shield and flutters o'er his eyes a lazy chillness crept along his blood choked was his voice his hair with horror stood juturna from afar beheld her fly and knew the ill omen by her screaming cry and strider of her wings amazed with fear her beauteous breast she beat and rent her flowing hair ah me she cries in this unequal strife what can thy sister more to save thy life weak as i am can i alas contend in arms with that inexorable fiend now now i quit the field forbear to fright my tender soul ye baleful birds of night the lashing of your wings i know too well the sounding flight and funeral screams of hell these are the gifts you bring from haughty jove the worthy recompense of ravished love did he for this exempt my life from fate o hard conditions of immortal state though born to death not privileged to die but forced to bear imposed eternity take back your envious bribes and let me go companion to my brother's ghost below the joys are vanished nothing now remains of life immortal but immortal pains what earth will open her devouring womb to rest a weary goddess in the tomb she drew a length of sighs nor more she said but in her azure mantle wrapped her head then plunged into her stream with deep despair and her last sobs came bubbling up in air now stern aeneas his weighty spear against his foe and thus upbraids his fear what farther subterfuge can turnus find what empty hopes are harbored in his mind tis not thy swiftness can secure thy flight not with their feet but hands the valiant fight vary thy shape in thousand forms and dare what skill and courage can attempt in war wish for the wings of winds to mount the sky or hid within the hollow earth to lie the champion shook his head and made this short reply no threats of thine my manly mind can move tis hostile heaven i dread and partial jove he said no more but with a sigh repressed the mighty sorrow in his swelling breast then as he rolled his troubled eyes around an antique stone he saw the common bound of neighboring fields and barrier of the ground so vast that twelve strong men of modern days the enormous weight from earth could hardly raise he heaved it a lift and poised on high ran staggering on against his enemy but so disordered that he scarcely knew his way or what unwieldy weight he threw his knocking knees are bent beneath the load and shivering cold congeals his vital blood the stone drops from his arms and falling short for want of vigor mocks his vain effort and as when heavy sleep has closed the sight the sickly fancy labors in the night we seem to run 
and destitute of force our sinking limbs forsake us in the course in vain we heave for breath in vain we cry the nerves embraced their usual strength deny and on the tongue the faltering accents die so turnus fared whatever means he tried all force of arms and points of art employed the fury flew athwart and made the endeavor void a thousand various thoughts his soul confound he stared about nor aid nor issue found his own men stop the pass and his own walls surround once more he pauses and looks out again and seeks the goddess charioteer in vain trembling he views the thundering chief advance and brandishing aloft the deadly lance amazed he cowers beneath his conquering foe forgets to ward and waits the coming blow astonished while he stands and fixed with fear aimed at his shield he sees the impending spear the hero measured first with narrow view the destined mark and rising as he threw with its full swing the fatal weapon flew not with less rage the rattling thunder falls or stones from battering engines break the walls swift as a whirlwind from an arm so strong the lance drove on and bore the death along naught could his sevenfold shield the prince avail nor aught beneath his arms the coat of mail it pierced through all and with a grisly wound transfixed his thigh and doubled him to ground with groans the latins rend the vaulted sky woods hills and valleys to the voice reply now low on earth the lofty chief is laid with eyes cast upward and with arms displayed and recreant thus to the proud victor prayed i know my death deserved nor hope to live use what the gods in thy good fortune give yet think o oh think if mercy may be shown thou hast a father once and hast a son pity my sire now sinking to the grave and for anchises sake old daunus save or if thy vowed revenge pursue my death give to my friends my body void of breath the latian chiefs have seen me beg my life thine is the conquest thine the royal wife against a yielded man tis mean ignoble strife in deep suspense the trojan seemed to stand and just prepared to strike repressed his hand he rolled his eyes and every moment felt his manly soul with more compassion melt when casting down a casual glance he spied the golden belt that glittered on his side the fatal spoils which haughty turnus tore from dying pallas and in triumph wore then roused anew to wrath he loudly cries flames while he spoke came flashing from his eyes traitor dost thou dost thou to grace pretend clad as thou art in trophies of my friend to his sad soul a grateful offering go tis pallas pallas gives this deadly blow he raised his arm aloft and at the word deep in his bosom drove the shining sword the streaming blood disdained his arms around end of section twenty four end of the aeneid of virgil translated by john dryden